Hello, everybody, and welcome to Getting APIs to Work. Today, we talk about the design of APIs. We talk about a new book, and we talk with the two authors, Josh Panelat and Lukas Rosenstock. Hey, guys, welcome. How are you doing? Hey, good, good. Pretty good. Thanks for being here. Maybe you, you can introduce yeah, yourself thanks for having just us. a little bit uh, be, before, before we get started. So maybe, Josh, you can get started with your background, where you come from, why you embarked on writing a book. Sure. So I'm Josh Ponlat. I run lead on Swagger Open Source, um, working for a company called SmartBear. And I wrote a book because I, like Eric, wanted to become rich and famous. So, <laughs> yes. just, I just can tell you, it. writing books really is the best way it's, to get rich. It's sure. magical. It's the quick and easy way to do it. Um, one of the key reasons, besides becoming rich and famous, is really to to teach. I think that a lot of folks are making API decisions who don't understand APIs fully, or could understand a little bit more so. Um, so that was one of the reasons I embarked on that journey about four years ago. Um, yeah, that's that's me. And Lucas, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm Lucas, and um, currently I'm a freelancer, and I do a mixed bag of things: um, a lot of software development, um, a bit of consulting, and also technical writing. And um, I have to say that in my in my previous work, like APIs were always like coming up, and they were um, like. Um, something that connects all the um, diverse areas uh, in which I work. And um, I really like about APIs that they are um, a way to connect different uh, machines, but they also have a human side because at the end of the day, it's developers who create them and developers who, um, who want to use them. And I think this whole area of documentation is just so important. And as I, as I mentioned, I have done a bit of technical writing, like block length um, or blog post length um, kind of things or like small tutorials. But I was really excited to take on the challenge to um, do the writing on a bigger scale, to um, to um, to write a full book and to know what what how this how this process is like. And just as Josh, I'm uh, I like I like teaching and I think writing a book is a good good way to both understand the concepts yourself and also teach them to others. What was your specific motivation to write about? So your book is called Designing APIs with Open APIs and Swagger. And that's a very specific focus. So what I'm wondering right. is why did you choose to focus on that topic, like on the specification language, so to speak, and not on, let's say, maybe a bigger process or like why that exact focus? That That's something I find interesting. We we wanted to introduce this topic of open API and, and I, you know, swagger the tooling around the ecosystem and the open API tooling around it so that we have a medium or a platform to talk about design. It's one thing to talk in the abstract and it's another to use uh, more concrete things and open API takes this idea of design and makes it concrete. And I think that was one of the, the bigger motivations that and um, just being able to teach that topic as well, the value behind it. So we wanted to do a bit of both. We didn't want to just be a, a here's what open API is and how it works. Uh, and we didn't just want to be here's how to design APIs according to us, of course, and, and our experiences. We wanted to mix the two together so that readers would have the tools to use, which is open API and a bunch of other things inside there. And they would have a mindset of still trying to apply best practices and, and to use these tools efficiently. So it's sort of like this wasn't just how to use a hammer and nor was this how to make a chair. It was how to make a chair with a hammer. That was our uh, goal behind that. So Lucas, I'm wondering, what would you say is the main target audience for this book? So. Um... I would say there are always um, a lot of stakeholders in an API process or in, an, in any project that involves APIs. And 
while I would say uh, I think we wrote this book mostly with a software developer audience in mind, like someone who already knows how to code, but now they want to go into the in this process of going API first and designing an API before implementing it. Um, but I really think we um, we also talk a lot about the the process uh, the process around um, API design, and because as I said, there are so many stakeholders involved. I think that also um, makes it interesting for uh, like any non-technical stakeholders, like even the maybe the the higher ups, uh, um, the project managers, or something, to to read this book just to understand the process and understand what this technology allows. And that's a good. I think that's a very important part because I think you know you have a lot of developers who are really good at developing software. That's that's what they've been doing, and that's not a skill that they need to learn. But this idea of designing something for consumption by somebody else, right? I think that is something which sometimes can be, it takes a little while to get used to. It's very useful to have a process. So I think that's a very good thing. I have one question for you because that's something that I've been seeing more and more where like this idea of API design to me seems to get bigger and bigger. It used to be this in, in the rest space, really this fundamentalist discussions around should we use put, put or post, right? Like these really kind of like very fundamental rest philosophy questions. Then we got to the point where, where you're at now with open API and these kind of things. And I think more and more we also get to the point where it's not just about open API and the technical, but also like what is the business value of that API? What why do we even have this API? What does it do for the business? And I'm wondering, is that something that you even touch upon in your book? And if so, how do you do it? How do you connect those dots between not just building that API and designing that API correctly, but also making sure that you actually design and build the, the right thing? So I, I could take this one. And I think we don't stress the, the side of it where it's like as a business product. I think that topic deserves its own forum to really get into. Um, one of the key focuses of, of this book was to on delivering execution and more importantly, mm -hmm. the steps that follow delivering execution, which is maintenance. So if, if we can get that part right, we will have done our jobs well. I think we, we touched a bit on a few aspects near the end of the book, like when we're um, talking about, okay, what it takes to move an API um, from internal use to the public. Um, and why you might want to do that or not. Um, and I think by in the design process, we're also like having this emphasis on getting getting not just uh, the API build right, but also getting the right API build and really focusing, okay, what is our use case and really going from from what do we need to how do we how do we build it and not just um, build just just anything. And I think that's kind of like the prerequisite before you can treat an API as a product to have this design mm -hmm. process, right? Where you know, okay, if that's the use case, how do we make sure that the API is the right one for that use case? And the one thing that I really like about your book is that you're not just talking about the design, you're also talking about how to then kind of improve it over time, right? Not, not just design it and then like declare victory and walk away. And, and that's, I think that's a pretty big part of the book. And, and uh, let's just take that opportunity actually to, to kind of give a brief overview of, of what you cover in the book. So you start with just the, basically you start with the idea that we, we should probably build an API for this. And then what in the process that you introduce and the tooling that you describe around that, like what, what do you cover? What like, does your outline look like? So in, in terms of like what's in the book itself, it's three parts. And part one is about literacy. So it's learning the language of open API, if you were to call it a language, right? How to read and write and what, what's entailed and the value behind it. Like open API is super cool. Uh, parts two and three is where the design process kicks in, where we try to address design from its fundamentals. And in our terms, domain modeling would be our starting point. So that does come after you've identified a problem space you want to solve. So that's not not something we look at in the book of identifying problem spaces, but more about we have a problem space we want to solve for, let's domain model, let's create this world, right? That is our domain. And then from that, we layer up 
the next stage, and that's the stage that's often missing in these contexts, is API design. We have a domain model. How do we map that to an API design? Once we have an API design, how do we map that to code and systems? And then, of course, how do we maintain those over time? And um, if you want, you can think of like parts two and three, like design sprints of a software. And uh, in part two, it's really about taking from an idea to a product, which is like an MVP, like having having one API that already fulfills the use cases and have a, a working application, even though we only touch the implementation like on a very um, like um, rudimental level. And then part three is really about expanding on that, adding new use cases um, and um, improving the API and um, also looking at, okay, how can we do that without breaking it? Yeah, that was that was very important for us that we had two so-called sprints because it, it needs to be iterative. Like we don't want to, here's your start, there's a middle, there's an end and we're done, right? What happens after that? And so part three is that iteration process. How do we make a fundamental change? And we try to tackle that again from the domain model up through API design and back through code, right? Because that's the real world. That's the world we live in. Um, We want new features out in our products. We want to iterate against the market. And so change is probably more important than initial design because initial design on the scope of like the time scale, you probably spend about 10% on initial design and 90% on maintaining a product year over year. And that's the part that I really like that you, you know, if, if, if we take this, this often used phrase of API products, seriously, right? And say the things that we build really should be thought of as API products, if we follow API first principles and all these wonderful things, then this perspective should also be the one that drives the way how we manage and, and evolve the product, right? So so that's the part that I really liked in your book, that, that you kind of use that as the starting point instead of saying, well, we improve we improve our system and then we probably also have to kind of update the APIs to reflect those changes, right? That's right. sometimes what you see is happening where you think like, mm, I'm not sure that's really the best way of doing that. And I think Lucas's initial point about designing for humans, right? That's, that's universal stuff. And an API is not, it's not really a connection between systems. I mean, that's where our, our heads go. It's a connection between people because it's people who take those APIs and integrate them into their systems. And so that is your layer of trust. If you don't trust the documentation, the whole system just loses all its value. I mean, how many times you look at docs, you you hope the stuff works. It's very important that it works. You almost assume everything there works. And on public scale, most of the time that's true because a lot of QA or quality assurance folks are attacking these systems and making sure things work. But um, often, often case, especially with APIs, public APIs, that's great. APIs as product, that's fantastic. But on an order of 20 to one, internal APIs seriously outnumber their public counterparts. And so when it comes to the tooling that we make and, and the folks that we interact with, it's those internal ones and they don't get as nearly as much love as public APIs. <laughs> it's very rare you're going to go to a public like Stripe's API documentation and something's broken. You'd be excited. You'd be like, oh my goodness, I found a flaw. Yeah, Whereas internal APIs, be, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Internal APIs is the whole other thing. You'd be lucky if it works the way someone has documented yeah. that left the company two years ago and now you're trying to figure out it, where this thing is. So a lot of these tools and systems are in place to make the whole process easier right? So that there are less manual steps to it so that these mm -hmm. lesser loved APIs get a little bit of extra love and that the developers working with them are a little happier. I like the lesser loved API thing. I may, I may <laughs> steal that at some point because you're so right. It's like all this talk is about, you know, like public APIs and partner APIs and monetizing APIs and, and all of this is important, but Like you say, there's so many more APIs out there and they're very important as well. And and sometimes they do feel like they're the lesser loved APIs indeed. And in the end, like your end goal, Josh, is you will become richer because your APIs are better. We all will. It's just the channel. We all will. <laughs> 
Okay, I want to thank you so much for being here. I think it was a very interesting discussion. Um, we will link to the book from the video description. We will link to some additional articles, right, that you've written about some topics that are covered in the book. So if you want to check out those, we will also make them available in the description. Thanks everybody for watching. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Check out the book. And um, if you like API content in general, consider subscribing. And with that, we're done for today. Thanks a lot. And until next time, keep getting APIs to work. Bye-bye.